Thank you, Mr. Swanson. Thank you, Dr. Shanahan. Uh, as we move forward, the, I just want to mention one thing. The professional development plan was not developed by the central office, three people that are speaking here. It was developed by a representative group from the district, which included teachers, administrators, and senior staff. Um, I believe we have a team of over 60 people working on that plan that Dr. Shanahan has, has laid out for you. So those three particular goals, it's going to take us three to five years to implement that, but it is truly a, a plan that was designed and developed by a large group of majority teachers who are closest to the students and have a better handle on what's happening and what's not and, and helped us to inform that particular plan. The next piece talks about the collaborations with social services and we were very fortunate last year to work with Dr. Fergus and uh, his organization and our school psychologists and our social workers to do an analysis of the social services that are in our community, the social services we have the ability to to, to provide within our school district, and what are the disconnects, and what are the connects, and how do we improve it. And from that, we learned quite a few things. We learned three specific things, three, three things to, of recommendation. A mechanism for social services coordination needs to be designed and developed in our school district. We really have to take more account of the social aspects of a child, the social emotional needs of the child. We need to pre prepare them and provide the environment for them to feel safe and, and secure in that environment. We've got to make sure they're coming to school ready to learn, and that's our obligation as well as educators. Uh, the social emotional needs of the students should be our priority. Um, another recommendation we received were workshops with staff regarding cultural responsiveness, pedagogy, instructional implementation, and culturally responsiveness. You're going to hear that again. That, that's, the, that's one area where we identified that. And when Dr. Fergus responds to you and, and provides you with an update, you're going to see, hear that again. Um, so it's the impact of understanding culture on the design and delivery of instruction that is a major priority for us. When you look at process and systems, I'm going to go a little bit quicker, I promise. Um, the process and systems, we have communication patterns. We hope to have a, a, an aligned system of communication from our schools to our district, from our district to our schools, from our district to our school to our community, vice versa, all the way around. There should be no break. There are a lot of breaks. There are a lot of things we have to repair, and we are going to work to do that. We can provide program, we can improve program, but if we don't fix the system, the programs aren't going to stick. So we're going to work very hard on what are the systems and structures we have in place within the district to make sure that all the hard work our teachers are doing, all the work our administrators are doing, will make a difference, and the system allows it to make that difference. And our community is informed, and our community has an opportunity to be a part of it. When we look at how we're doing around climate and culture, the awareness of the impact race and culture have on behavior, discipline, curriculum, instruction, and assessment, what we learned from that particular piece, we, we have a lot to learn about that. We have a lot of work to do around that. We have a lot of work to do around that, and one of the specific priorities that we're going to have is how do we embed this particular piece into our response to intervention program? How do we make sure that the first instruction provided to all our students meets the needs of all of our students? That when we're, we're speaking of a frame of reference to introduce a new concept, that we take into account all the students that are sitting in the seats, not the frame of reference of one person delivering the instruction. How do we learn that? How do we grow that, and where do we go with it? That's what we're doing. That's how we're doing. We need to improve. We also have partnerships. We have a variety of different partners that we're working with. We have New York University. We have Mount St. Mary College. We have Ulster Boces. We have the Newburgh Performing Arts. We have Liberty Partnership. I could go on and on and on with all the different partners we have. Our goal this year is to figure out what they're doing and how we can connect them and coordinate them to the first instruction we're providing in our schools. We've got a lot of different things going on. Everybody's working hard. Everybody's trying to do something. But is everyone working in the same direction and helping each other to do that? Not sure about that yet. Where are we going? School-wide plans. Every school, we've worked pretty hard this year. We've done some school-wide plans. So every school has, a, has developed a school-wide plan that says, this is who we are, had teachers involved in it, this is where we need to go, and we need to make sure we're aligned with the school district. Today at Newburgh Free Academy, Heritage, South, Temple Hill, and Newburgh Free Academy had leadership teams participate in the beginnings of how do we work as a leadership team, how do we create a comprehensive education plan that's going to drive the improvements of the classroom instruction so that our students become college and career ready. 
the graduation rates go up, and that means every kid. When you look at leadership teams, that's exactly what it is. Leadership teams are representative of the school community. You take a look at who the school community is, you make sure that there's representation at the table for that school community, and those are the people that represent the staff in the building around decisions that need to be made. We're trying to shift from, from top down, from, from directive to much more collaborative. And we've had a lot of support from the NTA on this. Um, we worked with the Professional Learning Communities grant that Mrs. Van Duzer had, had worked on with the district, and they were able to, to acquire that through NYSIT. We were fortunate enough to get the second round of that funding, so additional work will happen around that. Um, Data-driven decisions. We can't just shoot from the hip anymore. We've got to use the data to inform our decision making. Instructional leadership. We are working on leadership academies. We are working on what does it mean to be a principal? What does it mean to be an assistant principal in the Newburgh School District? What does it mean to work with a curriculum director in the Newburgh School District? We're trying to define those roles and expectations based on the needs of our students. Instructional coaches, they are going to be the conduit between the district office, the classroom, and the curriculum director. They are an integral part. Research is showing that having instructional approaches coaches that support professional development is one way that is escalating the scores in schools based in, in, in the areas of mathematics and English language arts. The common core standards, we're all, we're all trying to figure this out. We, we have common core standards now in English language arts and math and then the literacy strands go through the, the, con, the uh, core content areas of science and social studies. We're doing a lot of work around that. The state is rolling this out in a manner where the district is going to get trained by the state, then we come back and we turn key train to our schools. Community outreach, we can't do it alone. We need the help and support from the community. Uh, we will have a variety of different opportunities for that to happen. We will be uh, reaching out different projects, working with Pam Peterson, our parent community representative. She will be working with you and we will begin to talk about what's happening, what needs to happen, and how do we do it together. Uh, professional development, as I stated, we've got a professional development plan that's now endorsed by the district and will be going to the State Education Department for approval and strengthening partnerships. As we talk about strengthening partnerships, one of the things that we, we are hoping to do through the partner that's here this evening is to build upon the climate and culture concern that we have because that climate and culture piece, if you look at all those individual plans and all those different priorities that we're working on, this, is, this climate and culture piece is the one piece that I think will pull all these individual things together. And at this point, I'm going to turn the, the presentation over to Dr. Fergus and to Lorraine Lopez, who are from the New York University Steinhardt School, who have been working with us for several years behind the scenes and are now coming to the forefront and doing a lot of great work with us. So at this time, I'm going to turn this over to Eddie Fergus and Lorraine Lopez. Thank you.